Hello friends, I'm Naishik and today in this video I'll give you some tips and tricks of using CSS to improve the design and user experience of your website. Now many times it happens that you want to do some design changes on your website but you're not able to achieve that because your WordPress theme doesn't have that design functionality. So at that time these simple CSS tips and tricks can come in handy. Now to watch this video or to follow this video, you don't need to know any HTML or CSS. It's all gonna be super simple. It's just going to be simple copy and paste. Now before you proceed further, let me give you some examples of what we are going to do in this website. So first of all, this is the website that we'll use as an example website. This is an e-commerce website. So I'll do some changes on this website, some design changes, which are not available in the theme functionality. Then we'll also see how to redesign a form. For example, a default form looks like this. So really bad, really boring looking, ugly looking website or ugly looking form. So in this video, we'll learn how to convert this ugly form into something amazing and professional like this one. Similarly, if you see this website now, I'll have to you know, zoom out a little bit just to show you what I mean by that. Now I created an LMS tutorial some times ago and I, I created this website basically. Now everything was working perfectly fine except for this section. Okay, this section that you see right now on your screen. So in this section, I'm displaying different courses. But the problem was that this thing displays one course in one row. I wanted to display three courses in one row. So if you see the bottom section, the block section. Now here as you can see, we are displaying three different blocks in one row. I also wanted to do the same thing. I wanted to display three different blocks in one row. But that functionality was not available in the free theme. So I used some simple CSS code and I achieved this design. Now here as you can see, we have three different courses in one row. So you can achieve something amazing like this thing as well. Similarly, this is another website that I created. In fact, this tutorial is not even out. This is the tutorial that I'm working on. Now in this case, as you can see, this is the shop page, which according to me, in my humble opinion, does not look really good. Now by default, this is divided into two equal sections. So 50% for this image and 50% for this section for this content section. I did some changes over here. Now if you see this is the thing that I, this is the changed thing. Now in this case I changed the width. I decreased the width of the image because I think this does not need to be 50 uh, percentage. So maybe I did it. I made it 35 or 40 percentage and I made this thing wider. The content section wider. And then after that I removed this section. I removed this wrapper. So you have this different kind of style over here. So I remove this wrapper. So there's nothing in the background, no white color in the background, no border and all. This looks much cleaner. And after that, I also did some you know small changes like I increased the size of this font. So, you know, as you can see, I increased the size of this price text. So I did some changes over here. So in this video, you'll learn all these things and you'll learn many more things. You'll learn how to change the style of this thing. You'll learn how to change the color, how to change the font how to change the padding and margin, how to use the important tag, how to do some changes in the container, how to change the position. So for example, if you see this website, if I scroll down, you get this button, okay, top button. So when you click on this thing, you are redirected to the top section. Now this button, this top button is positioned at this particular place at the bottom right corner. So we'll learn how to position any different, any object or anything at any given place. So this is positioned at bottom right. So similarly, you can do some changes. You can position it at bottom left and so on. So basically, we are going to learn a lot of things related to CSS in this video. Now again, let me remind you that you don't need to know any HTML or CSS to learn this thing or to watch this video. I'll show you a simple, much better process of just copying and pasting the code. So let's get started. Now let me first show you the CSS syntax. So this is how the CSS syntax or this is how basically the format of CSS looks like. Now here as you can see, first we select the target. So in this example, we are selecting paragraph. So P stands for paragraph. You don't need to know all those things. I'll, I'm just showing you the format. So we are targeting the paragraph and after that we are doing one thing. We are saying that I want to change the color and I want to make it red. Similarly, we are saying I want to change the text align and I want to make it center. Now, a great thing about CSS is that it is very easy to read. So this code, as you can see, very easy to read. We know we are, you know, we are talking about color. We know we are talking about text alignment and so on. The format is also very easy. As you can see, we have this color, which is the property. Then after that, we have the colon. And after that, we have the value. And after that, at the end, we have this semicolon. So this is a very simple no format. Now let me show you one another very important example. Now suppose if I want to do some changes on this text color. 
So I can do one thing, I can right click over here and click on inspect. So this is the basic thing, you, whatever code you want to see, you just right click on that particular place and click on inspect. If you want to see any specific code, if you want to select that code, you can click on this selector icon. If you follow my mouse cursor, you can click on the selector icon. And after that, you can select any single thing. So as you can see, using this thing, this is how you can select different things. Now, right now, I want to select this thing, this title. So I'll click on this title. Now, whenever you select anything like this, you can see this is H2. You can read this thing over here. This is at the left hand side, whatever you're seeing this much, this is HTML. And at the right hand side, this small section, this is your CSS. So we are more focused on this CSS. Now, once you select this thing, after that, you simply click on this plus button. And after that, you change the color. So maybe I want to change the color to, uh, let's, select, uh, let's select red color. Okay, now as you can see, the color is changed to red color. Now, if you just select H2, if you don't add any uh, class like this, let's see what happens. And if I do one thing, if I change, if I let me let me add one more thing over here. Now, if you just select H2 and if you add the color, now if you scroll down, whatever H2 element is there, you will see the color changes. For example, all these things were different H2 element. So these colors are also changed. So whenever you do changes on your website, you should always use some class name for that particular section. So let me show you what I mean by that. So if I click on edit with Elementor, so if you're using Elementor of your, or if you're using any other page builder, or if you're using Gutenberg, you get this option. So I'm doing some changes on this section. So I click on this section. I go to advanced under Elementor. And here you have, as you can see, CSS classes. Here I'll type in maybe, uh, let's type in hero uh, title. Okay, this is the class name. So I'll just type in hero title and update this section. Now, if I again, let me press, let me again go back to that page. Let's go back to the home page. Now let's again press this thing, uh, right click over here, click on inspect. Now you will see this thing added over here. Now, as you can see here, it says hero title. So the class that we added that is now displayed on your website. Now, whenever you want to do some changes on your website, you click on this plus button. And if you're adding color and if you're adding some color, maybe we are adding red color. Now, once you change the color to red, now earlier, if you remember, uh, it will, it changed the color of all the H2 tags, right? Right now it is not happening, but if for you, if it happens, if it happens, if it is changing the text of, or if it is changing the color of all the H2 text, you can use the code that we have just added, which is hero title. So you can add that hero title just before this thing. Okay. Just before the H2 like this. Okay. Hero title. Now it will change only this text and it will not change any other text. Let me again show you for the H2. So if I click on this plus button, I select only H2. I change the color to red. Again, if I scroll down, now again, you can see everything becomes red. Now, because we have added this code, we have added this hero title code. Now, if I just enter that hero title code before this thing, before H2. Now, the reason I'm entering it before H2 is because as you can see, this is H2 and this hero title is before this thing. Okay, this line comes before this H2 line. So that is the reason why I'm adding it before H2. So before H2, I'll type in dot hero hyphen title. Now, if I leave it now, as you can see, if I again go at top, this title color is changed, but all the other title colors are not changed. So this is how useful it is. Okay, this was the first rule. In fact, this was not even some rule or anything. This was a very basic thing. Many times people complain that whenever they're doing some changes, for example, if they're changing the color of this button, other buttons also on the website, the color is changed. So if that happens for you, you can use this CSS code. You can give some CSS class name to your button or to whatever section you want. And after that, you can apply it like this. Now let's start with the text alignment. So if you scroll down, as you can see, this is the, uh, you know, we are dis displaying different products over here and the title is in the center. Now, if you want to change the text alignment, if you want to make it maybe left hand side or right hand side, change the alignment again, very easy. You right click on this thing, click on inspect and I'll select this selector. And whenever I have, uh, whenever I see that this is selecting the entire section, I'll click on that thing. Okay. So this is the thing. Now at the right hand side, we'll click on this plus button and we'll add this text. So we'll add text align, press enter. And after that, maybe left. Now, as you can see, it is shifted to left. Or if you want to make it right, just type in right. And now as you can see, shifted to right. So I want to make it left. I'll type in text align left. 
you should always copy this code that you have just entered. So make sure to copy this code because if you don't copy this code and if you just refresh this website, that thing will disappear. So you have to copy this code and you have to paste it on your website for this style to be applied on your website. So let me show you how you can do that. So you'll see this customize link at top. Click on this link. Now here at the left hand side, you'll see additional CSS. Click on that. Now first, let me scroll down. Right now, as you can see, center align. The moment I paste in this code, everything becomes left align. Okay, so this is how it works. Now, let me tell you about one more thing. Uh, let me show you how you can add comments. Now, later on, you might be, you know, doing many more changes on your website. So you might add, you might paste in many different codes over here. So you should always comment this code so that you know what this code is for. So to add a new comment in the CSS, you just enter, you know, forward slash asterisk, a few asterisks. So maybe in this case, let's add three asterisks and after that, whatever your comment is. So this is home page product title. Okay, so maybe this is my comment and again, you have to close your comment or else that code will not work. So to close the comment again, we'll add three asterisks and forward slash. So this is how your comment will look like. Okay, now click on publish. Again, let's come back to our website. Now let's see second thing, which is display. So if you want to display something or if you don't want to display anything, for example, if you see, uh, let's open the track order page. Now in the track order page, you will see this is the title. Okay, this is the title section. I don't want this title section maybe. Okay, if I right click over here, click on inspect. Let me show you now as you can see on your screen, this is the entire title section, whatever is selected. I don't want this entire section. So I'll select this selector and make sure this section is selected. Click on this option. Okay, as you can see, it says page header. Okay, now once you select this page header after that at the right hand side, click on this option. And now as you can see, page header is selected and now here, to remove this entire section, you just type in display, press enter and type in none. Okay. Now, as you can see, that entire section is now removed. Again, I would recommend you to just copy this thing and paste it on your website. Okay. Go to customize. And after that, you can paste in that thing again under additional CSS. So go to additional CSS, paste in this code at bottom over here. And again, you can type in some comment over here. This is, you know, track order page title track order title. This is what I'll type in. Now there is one more problem over here. Again, the same thing which I have explained to you previously. If you just do it like this page header display none, it will display or it will just hide the page header for all the other pages. I don't want to do that. Maybe I want, I don't want to hide the page header on contact page on my, my or blog page. I just wanted to hide the page header on this page. So to fix this thing, you again come back to this page and you right click over here. Click on inspect. Now, if you see at the very top, you will see over here body class is equal to and you will see this page ID. Okay, this is your page ID and this is some class. So I would recommend you to copy this class. Every page will have different page ID. So as you can see this, let me show you a few examples. This page is track order page and the page ID is 1117. If I go to some other page, maybe the contact page. And if I inspect this page, again, we'll see at top. Now here, as you can see, page ID is 201. So every page will have unique page ID. So we'll go back to our track order page. We'll copy the page ID, inspect element, and this is class. So page ID class, we'll copy this thing and we'll go back to our customized page. Click on additional CSS. And just before this page header, first we'll type in a full stop for class and paste in this thing. Okay. Like this. So basically your page ID class, so full stop and whatever your page ID you copied after that you put a space and after that page header. Now earlier, if you did not put this thing, it would you know, remove the page header from all the other pages. Now it will remove the page header only for this page, only for this page ID. So again, very useful. Now again, I'll publish this page again, cut this page. So this is how you remove an entire section from your website. Similarly, if you go to the shop page, for example, now on this shop page, as you can see, we have this sorting option. You can sort by popularity. You can sort by you know, latest, all these things. So suppose if you don't want to display this thing again, you just right click inspect. As you can see, this entire section is selected. If you want, you can use the selector. So whenever this entire section is selected, you click on that and that selector will be selected. Now again, at the right hand side, click on this plus button, type in display none. 
Okay, as you can see our entire section is gone. Now you can copy this code and you can paste it under appearance. I have shown you multiple times. So this is how it looks like. If you open a single product page, maybe let's open this page. Now if you, this is by default a regular e-commerce website. Now if you want to create, many times if you want to create maybe a catalog website, you want to display these images or and all, but you don't want to give this option of add to cart, okay? So basically you're not selling anything, you're just displaying your products, a portfolio type of website, catalog type of website. So maybe I want to do one thing for that, I'll remove this section, add to cart section. So I'll again inspect element and select all. I want to select this much, I want to remove this much from here. Click on this option, make sure this much is selected. And after that, click on this plus button, form cart, display, none. Okay, now as you can see that entire section is gone. I'll copy this code. Okay, now as you can see, now people cannot purchase anything from this website, basically from this uh, thing. They can see the product, they can see the image and all, but they cannot purchase anything. Again, if you want to, if you want to make sure that this thing works, click on customize, go to CSS and paste in this CSS code that you have just copied. So this is another thing. Now let's see how we can change the color. So let me first refresh this thing. I don't want this thing to be applied. Now you can change color of basically everything. For example, if you see this thing at top, we have this top header. If I right click on this thing, click on inspect. Okay, whenever this thing is selected, again, let me use this selector. Okay, this entire section is selected. Now as you can see, at the right hand side, you have top bar. This is the background color. I want to delete this thing. And again, I want to make it red. So maybe I'll just type in red. And now as you can see, the color is changed. So it is that easy, that simple to do some changes on this. Again, I would recommend you if you want to use this thing, copy it and you can paste it on your website. Now, if you want to change the color, some more color, maybe let's see how we can change the button color. So you can right click on this button, click on inspect. And again, make sure the entire button is selected. Now at the right hand side, you'll already, you'll already see the button color and all, but if you want to do this, do the, do the format that I've shown you, you can click on this plus button and you can just type in background color because this is in the background. Okay. If you remember, if you see this is in the background of this color, so you'll type in background color, press enter and whatever color you want, maybe red color. So I'll type in red color. Now inside this button, you see this option, you see this text add to cart. If you want to change that color, you just type in color. You don't type in background color, you just type in color and type in maybe black color. And now as you can see, this is changed. Again, you can just copy this code and you can paste it under that custom CSS, which I've shown you. Or you can do one thing, you can create a new file. Let me show you. Okay, create a new file, wherever you want and create a new text document. Name it anything you want, I'll name it CSS. Now let me open this thing. Now over here you can copy and paste in all your codes so that you don't have to again go back to customize, paste in the code, again come back to the website. So you can copy and paste all your codes over here and at the end you can copy all these codes from here and paste it under the customize tab. Okay, so you can do it like this as well. So this is how we change the color, whether it's background color or whether it's the regular color. Again, for some other things as well, for example, if you see this thing at the bottom right corner, this back to top button. If you right click on this and inspect, you can change the color of this thing as well. So click on this plus button again, type in background color and whatever color you want. Now, as you can see, when you select some other color that is changed. So maybe let's select uh, this color, dark green color. And for that arrow, you also you can change that color as well. So again, if you want to apply this thing on your website, copy it and paste it under that under this notepad. Okay. So this is how you can change different colors. Now let's see how we can change the font family. So by default, if you see, this is the font that is applied. Now I want, if you want to change the font family, maybe if you want to change the font family only for product title. So you can select the product title, inspect it, and uh, you can see the product title, uh, no code is given. This is the font size and all. I'll click on this plus button and I'll type in font family. There are many things over here. So first we select font family. So in this case, I want maybe Roboto or maybe let's select Montserrat. Okay. This is one font family. So I'll type in Montserrat. Now, as you can see, changes are applied. Then after that, we have another element or we have another property, which is font size. So I'll type in font size, press enter, or maybe I'll type in over here, 35 pixels. Now, as you can see, font size increased. Then we have another property, which is font weight. 
so whether you, you want to, you want to make it thinner or lighter or bolder okay th those things so we'll type in font weight and as you can see you already get this option if you select 100 very light if you make it 500 if you make it 900 very bold okay so maybe i want to select font weight 900 then you can also ha add line height and all so maybe let's add line height and maybe let's add maybe uh, 50 pixels okay now as you can see line height 50 pixels is added if you increase it to 500 now as you can see at top and bottom a lot of space is added okay so i'll line height you'll understand much better when we do these changes to this paragraph or for a single line for heading it you cannot understand it in a much better way so basically this is the change these are the changes that we have made if you want to apply these changes on your website you can copy it again paste it under that thing that you have created okay this is how it will it works now let's see this thing maybe you want to do some changes over here so you'll select this click on inspect okay this is paragraph if you click on this plus button now as you can see when you select this plus button it just adds paragraph if you add any code like just like this it will apply to your entire website so you should always do one thing you should always select some code or some class from top so at top this class is given so i'll select this class okay don't select Whenever you click, whenever you click on this plus button, if you see only P or only body written, don't select that thing, select the entire class. So I'll select this option and over here, I'll change the font family to maybe, let's see. Now, as you can see, when you change the font family, you can see the changes on your website, maybe this cursive font family. And now you'll understand that line height much better. If I change the line height to maybe, uh, let's select uh, 10 pixels. Now, as you can see, the height between lines, the space between different lines decreases. If I change this thing to maybe, uh, let's select 30 pixels. And now, as you can see, space between the line increases. So this is what it does. Again, if you want to do, if you want to apply this on your website, copy it, paste it under that notepad. Okay, and save that notepad. All right. So this is how it works. Again, you can do changes for different websites. You can do changes for you know many different things are given over here you have the if you want to change the font family of your menu or some different section you can do that thing as well now let me cut this thing let's move on to padding and margin so we can see the same thing over here if you select this option for example inspect this option now this color let me show you the color of padding and margin so let me select something else maybe let's select this option all right now, as you can see, this green color that you see, this is padding and this orange color that you see, this is margin. So this is padding green color. This orange color is this margin. Now, I, if I select this option, you can see the padding is added at top and bottom. If you see at the right hand side, you can see padding top and bottom 35 pixels. If you want to change this thing, for example, again, click on this plus button, maybe padding. Now, first of all, there are many different ways of typing padding and uh, padding and margin. Let me show you one way. So when you whenever you just type in padding after that, you have you go clockwise. So top, right, bottom, left. So if I just type in maybe 50 pixels, it will apply to everything. If you just type in 50 pixels, it will add uh, 50 pixels padding from all sides, as you can see on your screen. Now, if I add one more value, maybe I add 25 pixels. Now it will be 50 pixels from top and bottom and 25 from left and right. Okay. You understand that. And after that, if I add one more value, then it will be top, top, right, bottom, left. Let me add maybe 10 pixels. And after that, uh, maybe 25 pixels. Okay. Now, as you can see, top is 50, right is 25, bottom is 10, left is 25. Or you can do one thing and just let me delete this thing. If you want, you know, only one type of padding so you can type in padding top instead of just instead of just typing in padding you can type in padding top and you can add maybe 50 pixels and now as you can see only padding top is added if i add padding bottom just like this padding bottom maybe 25 pixels okay now as you can see padding top is added 50 padding bottom is 25 so you can do this th this way as well Similarly, if you want to change the margin of anything or if you want to add any mar anywhere, if you want to add margin, maybe let's see. So here, as you can see, maybe there is a lot of space. I don't want this much space. I'll right click over here, inspect it, use the this option. 
Okay, so here as you can see a lot of space is added so you can remove some space from here. And this is uh, another example. So wh whatever you want to do, you have a lot of options over here. You can remove the padding and margin from here. Maybe let's select this much. So over here we have padding top and bottom. We have 25 left and right. We have 15. Maybe I don't want any padding at left and right. I just want padding at top and bottom. So maybe I'll type in padding left. I'll select this option zero. Now as you can see padding from left hand side is now removed. Similarly padding top. I'll add this thing. Maybe zero. Now as you can see padding from top is also gone. Now if I do this thing only padding you can see the green color only at right hand side and at bottom. So only padding right and bottom is now applied. So you can use this padding thing and margin thing like this margin also works similarly if you just add let me show you over here as well. If I type in margin top same thing if I add maybe 25 pixels again you, you can see this thing now you have orange 25 at top that is your margin and at the right hand side and at the bottom we have 25 pixels uh, you know at the bottom and 25 pixels at bottom padding and 15 pixels at right hand side padding. So this is how this thing works. So this was padding and margin. Now let's see the important tag. So sometimes it happens that you change this if you want to change that thing but it the changes does not happen on the front end side. So maybe let me show you this example on some other website. This is another tutorial that I created hotel booking tutorial. Now over here if I open any single hotel booking page uh, a single hotel page suppose if I want to change the background color of this so I can right click over here click on inspect and this is the background color as you can see it is already given over here if I want to change the color I can simply decrease I can simply change the color code from here now it is this orange type of color if I want to make it red I'll just change this to red now sometimes it happens that you you copy this code you paste it on your website but still it will not become red. Sometimes it happens. So if you want to make it red, if you want to say that no I want this color to be red. So you can do one thing, you can use the important tag. After color red, after the value basically, type in this thing, put an exclamation mark and after that type in important. So now we are saying that this is important. Okay and now it will be red. Now there is another concept that I want to explain you. So whatever the thing, whatever code is given at the bottom, that code will be applied. Let me show you an example. So at top I have said that I want background red. But just below this thing if I type in background, if I type in maybe green. Now as you can see, now that red color code is automatically cut and now we have this green color. So whatever co code is given at the bottom, that will be applied. If you have already suggested some value for background color at top, but again you use the background color property and if you add some other value in this case green the bottom value will be applied. But if you want to do one thing uh, let me show you that important tag again. Now if I go at top and before or, or just after this red value if I type in important exclamation important. Now as you can see whatever you add at bottom that does not matter this thing will be applied because I have said that this is important. Whatever code is given over here just rewrite this thing and make sure this one is applied. So even if I add some more things at bottom maybe uh, let's add blue background it will not be applied okay because I have marked this one as important. So this is what this thing does okay when you use this important tag. Again let me remind you everything all these things that I am showing you you can learn it from here on w3schools.com this is not sponsored anything I've learned it from w3schools so that is the reason why I'm recommending it. So you, for example you can see this important tag over here if you scroll down there are some examples also given if you want to try it yourself you can click on try it yourself and you can try it yourself. Now let's see container. So what is a container first of all the container is this thing. So whatever uh, if you see this this page for example the content starts from here and at the left hand side as you can see we have this much gap at the right hand side also we have this much gap and the content is starting from at this place okay and it ends at this place. So this is basically what your container area is. So basically it is your content area your content will start from here it will end over here we have this much gap at left and right. If you want to change this thing you can inspect this thing. Let's open this one sometimes you might need to open this and now as you can see we have this container option over here. So if you click on this thing at the right hand side you can see the container is 1200. 
if you want to decrease this thing or increase this thing let me make it instead of 1200 let me make it 900 and now as you can see the content will have to fit within 900 pixels okay obviously it is looking bad but i just wanted to explain you that this is how it looks like now as you can see the content have to fit within 900 pixels okay this is how it will look like so if you have a very wide website you can fix this thing like this so under container we'll type in this thing okay if you want to apply this thing obviously you can copy this code and you can apply it on your website you can copy and paste in this code on your css code so this is what your container is most of the times i would never recommend you to do changes on your container it can create some problems for your website now let's see position so again we'll come back to this website if you right click on this option this top button if you inspect this thing you'll see the position tag you can see let's see this thing will be given and now as you can see at the right hand side position is fixed and we are leaving 20 pixels from bottom and 20 pixels from right now let me do one thing instead of 20 pixels from right let me make it left so if i type in left instead of right now as you can see this button is come to left hand side okay now it is at left hand side and we are leaving 20 pixels from left if you want to do some changes in this as well so maybe i want to leave 200 pixels from left and now as you can see and maybe 200 pixels from bottom now if you see this thing this is how it will look like okay you can also do some changes over here you can also increase the minimum width and minimum height so if i want to increase the size of this button let's increase instead of 40 pixels we'll make it 100 pixels height and 100 pixels width let's 100 pixels and now as you can see a bigger button you can do one more thing so this is very you know you can play around with this thing we can do all one more thing if you want to make this button circular you change the border radius so we'll type in at the bottom border radius border hyphen radius and maybe let's type in 50 pixels all right so it, it does not work when i type in border radius it gets uh, you know excluded just like this so maybe again some somewhere they have written the code that border radius cannot be changed so just just now i've explained you that important tag let's apply that over here so it is not getting applied so if i just add important after border radius let's see what happens now as you can see it is applied and this button is now circular button so this is how you use this important tag again important tag should also be used very carefully you should not you know misuse this tag it would it can create some problems on your website but in this case no problem because we know this id uh, this id for scroll to top is only for this button so this is not a problem so as you can see this is how you can change the position this is how you can change different things now let's see the same thing for different things now i would not recommend you to change some position i'm just explaining you that this is one of the tags and you can use it but i would not recommend you to play around with position now if i select this option right click on inspect this option we ins inspect this cart icon and let's do some changes on this thing so at the right hand side we'll click on this plus button will change the will make the position or maybe not not this car okay okay let's see the cart icon change the position to fixed and let's make it right 50 pixels right 50 pixels and uh, okay now as you can see if i scroll down you can see the uh, this thing over here cart icon right inside 50 pixels okay this is how it looks now sometimes if i scroll down if i scroll up in fact now as you can see this cart is getting hidden over here because sometimes what happens is we have different things and they collide so what we are saying is this is getting hidden because this goes in in the background this goes behind that element so if you want to hide the, if you don't want to hide this element you can give it a z index so you can type in z hyphen index and type in some number like two now as you can see now this will not be hidden okay like this now positions are mainly used to uh, you know in this example we have seen for this button and also for headers so if you want to change the position of this header if you want to make the position fixed for this top bar for example right click on this top bar click on inspect and let's change the position so let's add a position fixed okay when you change the position fixed sometimes it might happen like this so you can do one thing you can make the width 100% okay now this is how it looks like now if you scroll down again now as you can see this thing is getting hidden the image is coming at top of this 
thing. So we can do one thing again, change the Z index of this, type in maybe three, four, something like this. Now the image will go at behind and this will come in front, okay? This is how it works. Let me add margin of zero from top and bottom and auto from left and right. All right. Now, as you can see, this is fixed at top. Even if you scroll down, this thing stays with you. It is fixed at top. So you can use this thing as well. You can add some uh, margin or some padding as well on this option. Again, I would recommend you not to play around with this thing, but I just wanted to show you that this is how it works. Now let's see how we can do some changes in the background. We have already seen we have changed the background color of this button. We have changed the background color of few things. We have changed the background color of this thing, uh, this top bar. But let's see how we can add image in the background. So if you want to add some image in the background, let's see how we can do that. So maybe let's add image in the background of this header in this menu. So we'll right click on this header or this menu, click on inspect. Okay, make sure this entire header is selected. Now at the right hand side, click on this plus button. Now select background, just type in background. And after that, you, you have to type in URL, okay? And after that, you just if you just type in URL, you'll see a format like this URL and this bracket will be open for you. And now in this bracket, you have to enter the link of that image. So maybe if you have some image in on your website, you can go and see that image. So let me go back to my dashboard under media file. If you have any image like that, let's see this image. Okay, maybe this image looks good. So I'll select this image and copy the image URL. You can also copy image URL from outside your website. So maybe from some other website, you can copy that URL. Now paste this URL under this thing. And now as you can see, it is changed. Okay. You can do some more things. You can change the layout and all. You can change the position and all. First of all, uh, background position. Let's type in background position. And you can change it. You can make it center, center. So if I just type in center, center, center. Now, as you can see, it is in center. Or maybe you can type in right, center, or center, right, maybe. Or bottom, left. Or those kind of positions can be added. Now, I'll add bottom. Then after that, you can also do a few more things. Now, if this image is small, sometimes it happens. Sometimes it might happen that the image is getting repeated. So you can turn the repeat off. Let me use some other image just to show you this thing. So let's use a smaller image. So maybe let me, let me use this image. So I'll copy this image code, come back to this website, change the URL, replace it with this one. Okay. Now, as you can see the, because this image is smaller, it is getting repeated. You can see this thing, this image getting repeated a few times. So you can type in background repeat like this and you can type in no repeat. Now, as you can see, background is not getting repeated. Now, because it is not getting repeated, uh, we have the, uh, as you can see, background position bottom. Let's make it background position center so that we see the center part of the image. You can do one more thing. You can set the uh, background size to cover, background size, make it cover. So when you select cover, what we what we say is we want to display, we want to cover this entire space. Okay, that is what we want to say. Okay, so this is how you use this image. <laughs> okay, this was a very bad example, but you see this is how it works. Again, let me actually get back to that image. It was looking much better. So copy the link, replace it with this one. All right, so it is looking much better. Again, if you want to apply this on your website, you can simply copy this and paste it under that CSS code. And again, in this example, again, let me remind you one thing. If you want to change the uh, background color only for this page, only for the uh, only for this product page, again, you can go use this post ID. Okay. Let me get, get this post ID. So this is not a page. So that is the reason why instead of page ID, we have post ID. You can add this post ID class before this thing. And now it will now this header a thing will change only for this particular post. Let me show you. Let me actually copy and paste in this code under this customized CSS. Now, if I paste it under additional CSS, if I paste it over here, no, now as you can see, the color is changed. If I publish it now, this is only for this particular product, short sleeve t-shirt. If I go to some other page, if I go to contact page, now, as you can see, the header is normal. If I go to track order page, header is normal. If I go to the shop page, header is normal. If I open any product, 
header is normal. It will be changed only for that particular product. If I open this product, it will be changed. Now, as you can see, the header is changed. So this thing is very useful. This class and all is very useful. Now it is saying that only when we come to this post ID 113, this thing should be changed or this setting or this style that we have said should be applied only when we are on this post ID or page ID. So very useful. Again, let's come back to our website. All right. So the video is getting very lengthier. So I wanted to make it very short. So let's very quickly do a few more things. Let's see what we have next. Now let, let me go to this page. Where is that gone? Okay, this page. So in this example, there are a few important things, how we can change the width of any particular section, whether it is sidebar, maybe or not on this page, let's come back to this page. Maybe on this page as well. If you go to the shop page, now this is the sidebar, very small, the width of the sidebar is very small and after that, this is the right hand side. Let me show you how we can change the width of any particular section. So again, right click inspect, uh, use this uh, selector and select whenever you see this right hand side whenever you see this entire section selected and this example if you see now as you can see only this sidebar is selected so this is what we wanted when i hover over this only this sidebar is selected now if you see at the right hand side it says 20 pixels or 20 percentage let's make it 50 percentage okay now once you make it 50 percentage it will go at bottom because this thing at the right hand side it is not 50 percentage okay so we have to make it 50 percentage only then this will work so maybe instead of uh, let, let me this time select this right hand side content inspect. All right. Let's see. I think we'll have to use this thing. Content area. Okay. This is the one as you can see primary content area. If, you, if I click on this thing now at the right hand side, you can see this is the width. Now it is calculating it is saying 100 minus 20 because if you remember earlier the sidebar was 20. I'll make it 100 minus 50. Okay. Now as you can see 50, 50. Okay. Sidebar is also 50 percentage. This is also 50 percentage. Looks really weird, but this is how it works. Maybe let's, uh, let's see a more realistic perspective. Let's make it 35. Okay. 35 and whatever the option is left. Again, go back to sidebar, select this option, sidebar option. Ah, and let's make it 35. Okay. Now, as you can see more realistic and this is how it looks like. So you can change the width of all these things. Similarly, if you open any particular product, you also, you can change the width. So if I inspect this thing, let me select this option. Okay, this much right hand side. Now again, if you see, as you can see calculation 25 percentage, if you want to make it to maybe uh, only 15 percentage, you can do it like this. Now this is changed. Okay. So you can have us, uh, you can have a design like this as well. Then again, you can go ahead at the right hand side. You can change this percentage. You can increase or decrease this percentage. Let me select this much. Yeah, this is the one. Now, instead of 100 minus 30, we'll make it 100 minus 15, I think it was. Okay, I by mistakenly pressed Control Z on my keyboard. So again, I'll have to do everything again. So you understand the point, you change the content width from both the sides and it will work. Just make sure both the, when you plus, when you, when you add both the content width, it should be not, it should not be more than 100 percentage. So that is the most important point over here. Now let me show you this example. So if you, if you remember in the introduction, I said that I wanted to have three different uh, courses in one row, but I was not able to have that. Now again over here, just right click and select inspect. Make sure you just select this course. All right. So let me select, uh, yeah, this, maybe this one. So let me again. Uh, zoom out a little bit. So whenever you select, uh, whenever you select, whenever you see that this, it, this is selecting one course, entire thing or uh, the image and also the text and all, then that is the one that we want. Now, as you can see, when I hover over this thing, it is selecting this entire course. So I select this thing. I click on this thing and at the right hand side, I click on this plus button. Now, when I click on this plus button, I don't want many extra things over here. I just want, uh, till here. Okay. Only this much. 
you can have the extra thing as well but if, if you have that extra thing that changes will do only for this particular thing because again i'm saying just like we have post id and paged id for this also we have different id so what i did is i removed that id because if you did not remove that id only change changes will let me again show you let me again just make it like this select this thing click on this plus button now if i if i don't remove this thing and if i make it with 32 percentage maybe now as you can see only the width of this thing is changed because we are selecting this id now what i want to do is i don't want this id thing over here so wherever the id is used i'll delete so from here till at the end the id is 362 so i'll delete this thing and now as you can see it is applied for all the other things now i can zoom in now this is working much better now another thing that we need to do is we have done one thing successfully and that is making it 32% or 33% width. Another thing that we need to do is we need to bring it side by side. So for that we'll use display inline block. Okay, if you type in inline block and now as you can see this is how it looks like. Now it is looking bad for all these tags. First, first I'll, I'll do one thing. I'll copy this text so that I have this thing. Paste it over here. And I'll delete. I don't want to display these tags over here. So I'll right click on these tags. Select these tags this much. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, this is this much is selected and I'll display this thing none. I'll make the display none so that everything works pro properly like this. Now, as you can see, we don't have anything, you know, disaligned. So I'll copy this much. I've deleted that thing and I'll paste it over here. Okay, so this is now working this much code required to do this thing. Okay, now as you can see, this looks so much better, neat and clean. So this is how that thing was achieved. Now there is one more problem with this and I'm happy that I just remembered that thing or else this thing would have been very bad. Now if I, if you see this thing, the code that we have just copied. So what we are saying this, we are making it, we are changing the width to 33.1 percentage. Now this is good. This looks good on desktop, but let's see what happens when you see this thing on a mobile phone. So again, you can do the same thing right click inspect and if you see if you want to see this website on a mobile phone you can click on this icon device icon now as you can see if i see maybe let's see iphone uh, ipad let's see ipad or maybe let's say iphone x now even on iphone x it is displaying two or three different columns so it is looking really bad what i want to do is for all the other devices it should be one uh, one course in a row only for desktop i want that thing so here you can use the media query, which is very important. So in media query, we want, we see one thing. If you see my, my course that I've copied, this is the media query that I've copied. Again, you can find the media query as well on this website. If you search for that, let me show you that thing. You'll see under advanced because that is advanced thing. Here, as you can see under CSS advanced, you have CSS media queries. So what we do over here, I just wanted to show you this thing. This is the, I just wanted to show you the format. Okay. This is the format. This is how you write media query. Now this is this much, this one line is extra rest. Everything is same. As you can see, we have body, we have the property, we have the value and all only this X, this line is extra. So this would say something like this, add media screen and, and after that, whatever your value is now in this example, I've already used this thing. So I'll just copy it and I'll show you what this means. So I'll copy this thing, paste it over here on this website. Okay. We were working, I think, okay. On this website. Okay. On this website. So we are working on this website. So what I want to do is I'll open this thing over here and I'll before, just before this code, let me make it a little bit bigger. Yeah. Now just before this code, 33% width code, I'll paste in this code. Okay. And after that, I'll put this thing curly braces over here and I'll end this curly braces over here. Okay. So this is the code. Now what I'm saying is add media query and minimum width should be 768. So 768 is basically the width of a laptop. So at least a laptop screen. So when the screen is bigger than a laptop or an, uh, not a laptop, I would say 768 is more like an iPad. Okay. So when the screen is iPad or bigger than iPad, because we are using minimum width, 
So when the screen is 768, which is the iPad screen or bigger than iPad screen. So bigger than iPad screen could be laptop, could be desktop, all those things. So basically only on desktop or only on bigger screens, I want the width to be 33 percentage rest everywhere. I want the width to be simple, the normal default width. So this is the code that you have to copy and you have to paste in on your website. Okay. Only then this will work properly. So again, if you open this inspect thing, let's see on a regular website. In fact, let me just paste in this thing, paste in the code and let me show you that thing. So if I you now open the customized thing, open additional CSS and paste in the CSS code. Okay. Okay. We also want to hide this thing. Okay. Now it is looking better. Now if you see mobile phone, okay, this is looking perfect. Mobile phone, everything looks good. One course in a row only for, you know, minimum when the screen size is 768 and more, then it will be divided into three different rows or three different columns. Rest everything is looking good. So this is also very important when you want a different design on mobile phone and a different design on desktop, then again, a different design on you know laptop and so on you can use media queries i don't want to get in more detail you can go to this website w3 schools or there are many different tutorials online available media queries you can watch that okay so i'll stop it over here i just wanted to make this tutorial very short 20 30 minutes but this is getting very lengthy i also wanted to cover forms but i don't think i should be covering this thing because this is already getting very lengthy there are there are more tutorials on css on my channel you can watch those as well so if you go to youtube now, if you just search for Nayar Sheikh CSS, you will see there are few more tutorials on CSS. You can watch them. Now, in these tutorials, I've also covered forms and all. For this one, I'm just stopping it over here. All right, so this is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. Now, if you find this video helpful, give a thumbs up to this video. Share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, whatever social media platform you use. If you want to learn and if you want to watch more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss any future notifications. And finally, thank you so much for watching this video. See you in the next one.